Thousands of Israeli soldiers and civilians are being held hostage as part of an unprecedented attack by Palestinian militants on Israeli territory. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country is at war. His government says the Palestinian militant group Hamas launched more than 2,000 rockets into the country, killing at least 200 people and wounding nearly 1,000. Officials in the Gaza Strip say at least 198 people have been killed there in retaliatory Israeli strikes. The barrage of rocket fire from Gaza into Israeli territory began just after dawn, with explosions heard on the streets of Ashkelon. Sudarot is one of the towns thought to have been infiltrated by militants. With the latest on this fast escalating conflict, here's our Middle East correspondent Yuland Nell. And a warning, you may find some of her report upsetting. Israeli party goers from an overnight rave running for their lives. Israel's nightmare scenario, armed Palestinian militants at large in southern Israel. It's thought that dozens entered, some cutting through the perimeter fence from the Gaza Strip. In the town of Starot, residents hid as fighters drove in. There was shooting and the Israeli casualties began to mount. In a dramatic turn, videos were also shared of Israelis being taken into Gaza as hostages. The day had begun with intense barrages of Palestinian rockets, some reaching as far as Jerusalem. But the worst damage was in the towns closest to Gaza. This was Ashkelon. Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, met top security officials. Since this morning, the state of Israel has been at war. Our first objective is to clear out enemy forces that infiltrated and restore the security and quiet the communities that have been attacked. The second objective, at the same time, is to exact an immense price from the enemy within the Gaza Strip too. Leaders of Hamas, the Islamist militant group which controls Gaza, now living overseas, were shown watching the unfolding news and praying. In Gaza, there were celebrations after an Israeli tank was captured and stolen Israeli military vehicles were driven in. But soon the deadly pounding by Israeli warplanes began, the Israeli military saying it was targeting Hamas sites. And in Gaza too, the hospitals have now been overwhelmed. Many Palestinian families have fled from their homes and are seeking safety in UN-run schools. After this unprecedented surprise attack, Israel is calling up military reservists. It said Hamas will pay the price for its actions. And the fighting goes on. The question now, can it be stopped from spreading to other Palestinian areas and the wider region? Yilan now there. Well, let's bring you the latest figures coming into us from Gaza. The health ministry have told the BBC there that 232 people have been killed and 1,790 have been injured. Well, let's go live now to our Jerusalem Bureau. Bureau Chief Joe Floto, who's following all the developments. And Joe, also in the past few minutes, confirmation from the Israelis that at least 200 Israelis have been killed in those attacks today. Bring us the latest. Yep, so the, the casualty figures are coming up on both sides there. There's still fighting going on. So we're just uh, coming off a, uh, an Israeli military briefing and they're confirming that there is ongoing gun, gunfire in some of their military installations and border crossing points on the Gaza Strip, which uh, uh, has taken them hours uh, to retake and they still haven't completed that process. They estimate that hundreds of militants managed to break out of Gaza and storm several locations near the Gaza Strip in Israeli towns. And we've seen this chaos unfold during the morning hours with people being taken hostage, a number of people killed, and we've seen extraordinary videos of Israeli civilians being dragged away by militants, supposedly into the Gaza Strip. And we can confirm that there are dozens, we think, of hostages now being held by militants in Gaza. Uh, there's, there's so much to talk about, Joe. Um, 
I just want to ask you about the military operation because also in the past few minutes the Reuters news agency were reporting a military spokesperson, Israeli military spokesperson saying we are prepared for an escalation in the north. Now um, geography wise a lot of these attacks happened in the south of the country. What do you think that's going to mean? What they're doing there is trying to reassure people and send out a message to Israel's enemies outside the country that they are prepared for a war on several fronts. The main concentration of military effort at the moment is in the Gaza Strip. So they are amassing hundreds and thousands uh, of soldiers. They've called up reservists and they are preparing for a big ground operation into the Gaza Strip. They've made no secret of that. It will take them a while to plan that. In the meantime, they are bombing the Gaza Strip and that hence the casualties that we're seeing being reported out of Gaza. But to the north of the country is Lebanon. And Hezbollah is a well-known militant organization that runs pretty well that country and controls uh, the large area of the south of that country and has had a war with Israel in the past. And they have voiced their support for Hamas today. And within their control, within the, 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 the areas of control of Hezbollah, are also Palestinian militant, militant factions who have in the past fired rockets out of Lebanon into Israel. So Israel, the Israeli military is saying they are prepared for any eventuality. but. Make no mistake, what they're planning at the moment is a massive attack on the Gaza Strip using thousands and thousands of soldiers. We just don't know when that's going to happen. OK, and politically, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has in the last 20 minutes or so said he's invited the opposition leaders, Yair Lapid and Gantz, to join a national unity government. What's that going to mean? Well, I think at times like this in Israel, you often get very, very stark political differences set aside uh, for the sake of national unity, and that's what we've seen this evening. This evening, those political, those opposition figures really don't like Netanyahu. They've they've been bitter political rivals, but they are going to sit uh, in a national unity government. Benny Gantz is a, a very, very senior military officer, former chief of staff, uh, and will form part of that government. But uh, this is a a very divided country at the moment politically. We've seen protests continue for most of this year because of, uh, of political um, decisions made by Netanyahu that haven't been agreed with by lots of the population here. But at the moment, this country is reeling in the shock of, uh, of what has never been seen by many, uh, many people living in Israel. You have to go back uh, probably to the Yom Kippur War about 50 years ago before you get anything remotely close to this. If you think about the war between uh, Hezbollah and Gaza in 2006, we've already surpassed that death toll on the Israeli side in just one day. And in, in that situation, we only had a tiny infiltration into Israel proper. This is something different. This is something that the Israeli military was supposed to stop. This is not a surprise that Hamas have wanted to do this. It is a surprise that they did it today and in such numbers. And a complete surprise is that they were so effortlessly successful for hours and hours and have wreaked havoc. And now they hold in their possession, we think, dozens of hostages, both military and civilian.